Frida was all dressed up, ready to go to church. She was wearing a pretty pink frock, which Mum had painstakingly ironed, clean white socks, well-polished shoes and a lovely little spring hat. She really was a picture. Mum felt proud of her and Frida was quite pleased with herself too. Now dear, said Mum, you sit on the sofa while I get ready. I won't be very long. Couldn't I walk around the yard for a few minutes, asked Frida. It's so nice outside. All right, said Mum, but do keep yourself clean and don't go out the gate. Yes, Mum, said Frida. Call me when you want me. Then she opened the door and went out. I won't be more than a few minutes, Mum called. Be good now. As Frida waited for Mum, she wandered from one flower bed to another until she found herself at the gate. I wonder how much longer Mum will be, she said to herself. Perhaps there's time for me to go and look at the fish. By the fish, Frida meant a pool down by the river where fishermen, when they had had a big catch, used to keep their fish alive until they wanted to use them. This pool was always a great attraction for Frida. She never tired of looking at it and it was so near it was just at the bottom of the hill. Because there was no sign of mum, Frida decided she would hurry down, take one look at the fish and hurry back. Of course, mum had said she was not to leave the yard, but perhaps it would be all right, just this once, provided she keeps herself clean and tidy. And she would do that, of course. So having made up her mind to see the fish, Frida hurried down the hill. She knew just where to go, for she'd gone there many times before. What a wonderful sight it was. It was full of fish. Big ones, little ones. Frida was fascinated. She loved to watch them dart about the water. This was better than going to church. In fact, she forgot all about church. Unfortunately, she also forgot that she was all dressed up, ready to go to church. A few other children were at the pool too and some of them were having fun jumping across it. It wasn't very wide and as Frida watched the others jumping she said to herself I believe I could jump that far too. So she ran a few steps and made a big jump. So she thought but it wasn't big enough. Splash! Down she went right in the middle of all those hundreds and hundreds of slimy wriggly fish. Shoes, socks, dress and hat all went under the water. Coming to the surface, Frida managed to catch hold of the wooden ledge which ran around the pool and with the help of the other children she scrambled out. What a sight she was! Instead of a nice, neat, clean little girl, all dressed in her best, she looked like a half-drowned monkey. Dirty water oozed from her hair and trickled down her face onto her muddy dress. More dirty water dripped upon her socks and shoes. Oh dear, what would Mum say? Hurrying up the hill, she saw Mum standing at the gate, all dressed in her best and looking up and down the road, searching for her precious Frida. Suddenly Mum saw the grimy, drooping little creature coming up the hill and could hardly believe her eyes. Was this the clean, pretty little girl she had told to stay in the yard and keep clean half an hour ago? Perhaps I should draw a veil over what happened next. Suffice to say that after what happened in the bathroom, after all the dirty, sodden clothes had been removed, Frida made up her mind she would never, never disobey her mum again. As for the fish, Frida told me herself that she never went to see them again, at least not when she was all dressed up, ready for church. <laughs>